All right, today I'm here to show you a Mavic Pro running a full FLIR thermal sensor on top of it. So I'll kind of show you my rig. Uh, I got my FLIR Bosin camera in 2017, October. Um, a big part of how you install this, it actually took me two attempts. Uh, at first what you'll see is I've got all the factory parts and pieces of the Mavic Pro left as is, untouched. And what you'll see is I've put a vibration dampener essentially to avoid the vibration for the thermal sensor. You'll see I've got a video transmitter with changeable frequencies. At first I put a micro one of these inside the shell but I wasn't getting enough transmission distances so I ended up putting it on the exterior I'll just kinda zoom in here so you can kinda see where I've mounted I've got holes drilled in the shell for the cable for the thermal right here is how it attaches you just un undo this knob and this is the thermal sensor as you can see the the bosun for those that haven't seen it is extremely small it's about three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch I've got it on a little 90 bracket, and I got it mounted on a removable, almost like a GoPro mount, but just a little simple mount like this that I just twist. So it is fixed when flying. I can I can turn it. You can see the thermal changing uh, down below, but I do tilt it kind of all the way down at a 45 degree angle. And what I like to do is start my flight with the 4K DJI camera kind of mounted at the same angle as the thermal camera. So I kind of get a same field of view kind of picture. So, a couple things. Obviously, for those that are new to thermal, you can see kids lost at a campsite. You can see animals if you wanted to hunt. You could see uh, energy change uh, on, a, on, a, on a building in terms of HVAC. You can see body heat. So, as a simple example, if I was to shine uh, this uh, thermal sensor on my hand right now, hopefully you can see the thermal image on all those screens what you're seeing is just my hand on a cold bed. If I move my hand, watch this, you'll see my handprint. And if I zoom out, you'll still see my handprint in that image. So notice, notice I'm seeing a handprint. And uh, I'll zoom in and do that again so you can see it. So essentially, note I took my hand off and you can still see the handprint right there. As I zoom out, you can see all the equipment. But I'm sh I'm shining my drone right there on the uh, on the side of the mattress. So let me let me try that again so you guys can see. So see where this purple star is. I'm gonna put my hand right over that. Right now you can't see the thermal because it's over here on the drone. But in just a second, what I'm gonna do is show you how that works. So here's my hand on thermal. Hopefully you can see all this setup. And as soon as I move my hand off, the handprint is still there. See that? Okay, so long story short is this is what I look like in thermal imaging. You can see my skin tones, you can see the body heat radiating off a thermal sensor. The sensor can be changed, you can change the color palettes of that thermal sensor so I can show you that a little bit later um, but I, in this setup I'm not able to do it remotely I have to set it up before I fly it so here's my setup I'm flying with standard drone you see I've got a antenna here a second video transmitter that means I'm actually broadcasting in addition to the normal setup so this would be the setup of the drone by itself in terms of my, my cell phone and a, and a regular ground station or controller. Wirelessly connected is this device, which is just by $75 on the internet, no big deal. And whatever frequency it, it's pulling in at is what I see it at. So you can see right there, that's what I would fly with if I'm flying in the dark or over farmland or something. I can uh, see the thermal view in real time while watching the video view. So that's video and that's thermal at the same exact time. And that is how that works.
Okay, then simultaneously, just for fun, you of course can record the thermal on an SD card in the side of the uh, screen. You also can broadcast to your laptop, which is just an export from that or an import into that. So I'm just using a basic input there. Uh, notice I'm, I'm, this is another capture technique. Uh, what I've also found successful is you can broadcast this in real time. You can record it. You can capture all the data for later. I've also found it interesting to take, take the cell phone out and put a tablet in here. Then I can broadcast HDMI out. So while I'm flying the drone in real time, I can be broadcasting in 1080p. I can be also streaming the thermal signal all in sub two seconds real time. I do not suggest the default apps that come with DJI and Facebook or YouTube streaming. I do not find them to be very effective. But you can reach out to me if you want more information on how to stream live. I've been doing that for years. Um, I'm a pilot, uh, 107, FAA certified. Um, I do not fly a lot commercially, but I do have all the rights to. Um, I've been flying for about six years, since about 2011. Uh, flew a couple of Chinese homemade products um, over the years. Um, learned on some of the small handy ones and then grew up into sort of uh, more robust and DJI products. To me, this setup is awesome because I can travel in my entire laptop bag that looks like that. I can travel with all of this on an airplane. Um, and this is my normal setup when I'm flying around the country, around the world, uh, doing different techniques. There are a lot of DJI products that are very high-end and, and other brands, but the mobility of this with the thermal sensor, just one more time zoomed in here, that thermal is just unbelievably small. If you don't need very, very tight precision and you're looking for macro things, this is quite a setup right here. So you can see I have all kinds of capabilities here. No problem at all. Hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you. Bye-bye.